Well, today I'm going to be talking about the artist William Ratcliffe because it's 150 years since he was born. So William Ratcliffe was born in a little village in Norfolk called Cleckheaton. But when he was quite young, the family moved to industrial Manchester. So it was very different from, from Norfolk. He left school at about 15 and worked a little bit as a clerk, but he started taking art lessons at Manchester School of Art, which was a really good and important art school at that time. And when he left the art college, he became a wallpaper designer. And we know that he designed wallpapers for quite a few years. First of all in Cheshire, where he lived with his sister, and then he moved to London as a wallpaper designer. So this was all about kind of the turn of the, the 20th century. Now, Letchworth was a new garden city that had been founded in 1903, and William Ratcliffe was clearly new about the garden city um, and wanted to come and live here, which he did do in 1907. So the town was really only terribly new. I think there were just a few hundred people living in Letchworth when, when William Ratcliffe arrived. And he came as a graphic designer and he did things like calendars and postcards for the first Garden City company. So he worked as a graphic designer for some years and then he met an artist called Harold Gilman who had also moved to Letchworth. And Gilman persuaded him to give up the graphic design and actually become a proper full-time working artist, which William Ratcliffe did. And this is one of his Letchworth paintings and it's called Manor Farm. And I think you can see the, his interest in pattern design, the fact that he was a wallpaper designer, looking at the, the way he's done the paving here um, and all every, every individual little leaf and so on. And this, this house, which is, is in Norton, was actually at this point owned by somebody called Roger Parker, who was brother of Barry Parker, who was one of the first two designers of the ground plan and many of the buildings in the early Garden City. And William Ratcliffe, was friendly with the Parker family, particularly a man called Stanley Parker, who was um, Barry Parker and Roger Parker's other brother, who became art teacher at St Christopher School, art and craft teacher. He was a, a very good craftsman. And he and William Ratcliffe were like, really good friends for the whole of their lives. And William Ratcliffe lived on and off in Stanley Parker's house with his, with his family whenever he was in Letchworth in a little tiny room he didn't have any money. Once he'd given up being a graphic designer, he just never had any proper income for the rest of his very long life. Hardly sold any pictures, only had two exhibitions, only had one solo exhibition, and that was the year before he died. Um, that was 1954. So he lived, he really lived the life of a struggling artist um, and had no money for oil paintings after about the 19, kind of about after the First World War, really, he kind of gave up oil painting, we think, because he just couldn't afford to buy the canvas and the oil paints. And he, he worked in pen and ink and watercolour um, for, the, for the rest of his life. And he was very tiny. He was four foot 11, so he's about here. Um, he didn't ever marry. He was very easy, I think, to have as a house guest, because he didn't have a house of his own for most of his life because um, he was so little and he didn't eat very much. He just lived on cornflakes and boiled onions, people say. But he was a very, very good artist. And we're really lucky um, at North Hearts Museum to have the world's kind of most important collection of William Ratcliffe paintings. This painting is called Reflections Ickleford. And this is another of the canvas print copies, actually, of the William Ratcliffe work that we have around the up around the stairwell of the new museum. So this painting is Ickleford, which is just kind of between Hitchin and Letchworth, really. Um, as I've said, William Ratcliffe lived a lot of his time life in Letchworth along the Wilbury Road. Which, and he used to take, we know he used to walk over the fields to Ickleford, and he did a number of paintings of, of Ickleford. And this painting is particularly a lovely one for us to have because in 1954, William Ratcliffe had his solo exhibition at Letchworth Museum. And it was quite sad because he didn't really sell very much um, and it was very much the end of his life. But we have a photograph of him in Letchworth Museum, I think probably at the private view. He's wearing what looks like a rather natty silk jacket. Um, and he's looking, in fact, I think he's even holding this, this painting. Um, and we didn't have it in the collection. Um, it was just one of those paintings. We didn't know where it was. Um, for many years and then 
just very, by kind of serendipity really, I happened to be in London at a, an art dealer's, the Fine Art Society, and, and I just noticed something that looked like this picture, and what's this picture, up the stairs, and I went to have a closer look and realised that it was the picture that William Ratcliffe was looking at in our photograph. So I was really, really excited um, and wrote to them afterwards and um, they, they, they sold the work to us. Um, we were very lucky to get grant aid um, to, to, to buy it. Um, so it's a really kind of, it's a very nice picture for us to have and it's a, it's a, it's a lovely view of Ickleford of the mill pond and part of the mill house which is now no longer there. It was um, demolished many years ago in fact, so this is a scene that, that no longer exists. So this is the painting called The Window and this is another of William Ratcliffe's Letchworth paintings and I particularly like this one, well for, for lots of reasons, first I think it's really rather pretty. It shows how William Ratcliffe built up his paintings, he did different dots, dots of colour over and over and again over the canvas, um, more and more, which was a um, a technique he learnt from someone called Lucien Pissarro, who was the son of Pissarro, the Impressionist painter. So it's a kind of Impressionist way of working. But also, if you notice here, the um, shadows are all quite purple, purple coloured, which was a favourite um, kind of motif of a group of painters around this time who were called the Camden Town Group. And when paintings like this and others were displayed in exhibitions, um, one of the reviewers said that uh, William Ratcliffe had the disease of purpleitis, and, and you can see it in, uh, in a number of his paintings. And another reason I like this picture um, is because it was owned by a man called Louis Falk, who had an embroidery works in, in the New Garden City. And he had been persuaded to come to Letchworth, which at this time of painting here, 1913, was still, it still was a very new town with muddy paths instead of tarmac roads. And, and everyone who lived there had made the decision to leave wherever they were, were living and come to this completely new, quite utopian town, you know, so that they could live in, in a new, better way. And uh, Lewis Falk had heard Ebenezer Howard, who was the kind of inventor of the Garden City concept, talking about this new town which was going to be full of uh, flowers, fresh air, flowers and perpetual sunshine, which is enough to encourage anybody to move to somewhere. Okay, so this painting was painted in the early 1920s when William Ratcliffe was living, we think probably in Hammersmith, in, in a rented room. He did spend say, most of his life in you know, one room living uh, where he always seemed to paint the rooms he was in. And you always see like a kettle there on the, on the fireplace um, in all his rooms. And there's often a, a teapot, a kettle, nice cup of tea was clearly important to William Ratcliffe. And what's good about this picture is it actually shows, can you see his, his palette here um, and perhaps some turpentine and looks like a box of matches down there. We don't know exactly where, where this, this was, where he was, where exactly where he was living, but it's also quite interesting that on the fireplace he's got what's clearly quite a modern and a rather abstract painting. Because although his works are not terribly um, kind of modern in the way that some of his contemporaries were, like, like Spencer Gore particularly, he knew all the young progressive artists of the time and ex did exhibit um, in some group exhibitions with some of the, the people who were the most progressive artists of, of their day. So we haven't managed to identify this painting, but it might well be by, by quite a well-known um, artist. This painting is actually a woodcut rather than um, an oil or a watercolour. And William Ratcliffe did it in 1909. Um, it was in a Letchworth Garden City magazine called The City. And it shows Letchworth, what's now Letchworth Hall Hotel in winter with a, a man trudging up here with it looks like some sticks on his back, but it's a very, really lovely print, I think. Um, and he made quite a number of, of copies of, of, this, of this print. So this is a painting called The Temple Church, and it shows us the Temple Church in London near the law courts. And it was painted probably about 1911, 1912. So at this time, William Ratcliffe was still mainly living in Letchworth, but he was going to, um, evening classes in art um, at the Slade School in London. 
where he'd been kind of recommended to go by Harold Gilman, who was a very well-known artist. And this shows very typical style of working for all the Camden Town painters, where they put lines like this, kind of a grid pattern over the pencil sketch, and then he'd grid up his canvas and then copy the sketch onto the, onto the canvas to make sure that he'd got it exactly right. Um, and obviously this painting, he never finished it, so we can see you know, the first workings and then he just never got around to doing the, the base of the picture. But it's in this very typical Camden Towny, rather purpley brown um, colours again. But rather, I love the, the delicate kind of tracery of the, of the trees. He was a very good draughtsman in his own quiet way. He was a very kind of quiet man who did these little quiet, quiet pictures. Nothing ever major happens in any William Ratcliffe painting. There's not a lot of action, very few people, but you know, houses, places where he lived or, or landscapes. And that was really, you know, that was his subject matter. And it's far, like many artists, recognized now far more than he ever was in his lifetime. So this painting is an example of William Ratcliffe's watercolor style. Um, as I said, really after the First World War, most of his works were, were in watercolour. Um, and they're very, very delicate watercolours, very delicately drawn, very carefully drawn. Um, and we have a number of watercolours showing kind of interesting machinery. You know, I think he was clearly rather fascinated by cranes and, and industrial buildings. Perhaps there's a leftover from the time when he lived in industrial Manchester as a, as a child and young man. Um, and here we see the cranes and this barge, which um, would float up on high tide, and these um, large drums would be transferred onto the bigger ship in the middle of the Thames. Um, but again, we can see how he's, he's done all the, the kind of dif different bricks. Again, this idea of him being a pattern maker um, from, from when he, he was a wallpaper designer. Um, and unusually, we have a couple of people here. They're quite rare to find people in, in uh, William Ratcliffe watercolours. Actually, there's three. There's the chapel on the barge as well. So this is a lovely um, pen and ink drawing of a little girl called Brynhild Parker, who was one of the three daughters of Stanley Parker, who lived in the house on Wilbury Road that William Ratcliffe kind of lived in, lodged in, whenever he was in Letchworth, which was really the majority of his life. And Brynhild actually became an artist herself. In fact, all three daughters um, had an art training and became artists. Now, how much that was to do with William Ratcliffe, we don't we don't completely know, but we do know that he certainly influenced them. And this shows the attic, the attic where Brynhild, or Bryn as she was called, you know, clearly went up to draw the rather nice arts and crafts chair she's sitting on. And later in her life, she actually said, it's written on the back here, the attic where I had my little room. William, he meant William Ratcliffe, William did a drawing of me up there. I wish I had kept it. He was such a dear little man, contented with nothing living the simplest of lives with hardly any money. And now his paintings are sought after and very valuable. It's such a shame. So that was what Brynhild wrote in 1982. She didn't realize that actually the people, the family who bought this house um, found this drawing up in the attic and they incredibly kindly gave it to us at North Arts Museum a couple of years ago. So, so it's, a, it's a rather lovely thing to have. Throughout his life, William Ratcliffe only had two main exhibitions, one in 1946, which he shared with another artist. And by this time, William Ratcliffe's work was looking very old fashioned. It really wasn't modern, if you think it's post-war, coming up to the 1950s. And yet William Ratcliffe was exhibiting artworks he'd made in the 1910s and, and 19, kind of up to 1914, 15, when he was still doing oil paintings. So they just seemed really old fashioned and he didn't sell anything and one of the reviewers said how sad it was to think of this poor chap having to pay for all the framing for the pictures for this London exhibition and then just not selling anything. And then the other exhibition, his only sole exhibition, was at Letchworth Museum in 1954, where he exhibited quite a lot. Again, had things for sale, but didn't really sell them. Um, and this, this work, The Window, was exhibited, but it was, it was just lent by the owner at that point. It, it wasn't for sale. And then he died in 1955. And I have a very um, nice obituary for him, which I'd just like to read. It was something of a shock to many old residents to hear of the death of William Ratcliffe. He seemed such an old institution in Letchworth that, though he was 84, he became almost permanent, 
and it seems only a week ago he passed my window with his knapsack, walking more or less as of old. Ratcliffe painted some of his good work in a studio, which later became part of my cottage in Wilbury Road. He's been a great friend. As a painter, he seemed content to be unambitious, but that was deceptive. His subjects were quiet and perhaps almost tame, but he had such exactitude and care in handling the shapes of buildings and apparatus, as well as great skill in laying his colour, that he was marked out as a true artist. His devotion to art was rare. He lived on very little, but always seemed to enjoy life. He said very little about his own work, which was well worth talking about, but would talk about Van Gogh or Matisse or other painters who were more in the public eye. It is a loss which one will realise more as time goes by, and his small, sturdy figure with the knapsack has quite faded from Cowslip Hill. Thank you.